This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we are here back live at the Prince of Investment, right here live with your host, Prince Dyke, coming all the way live on the beautiful state of Denver, Colorado, via the lovely state of Honolulu, Hawaii. But as always, I don't have a lot of time. But before I get into that, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, comment, and share button. Um, follow the channel. Follow if you get the playback or however you may catch this around the globe. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So as you guys and girls know who follow me and follow this show and follow anything that I do, you know that, you know, I like dividends, right? Um, so, you know, dividends, dividend-paying stocks are stocks that pay you dividends, right? So when you pay for when you purchase a stock, you're buying a piece of a company. And when a company makes money, some companies, they pay back the dividend. So this show, as you can see in the description box, we're going to be talking about CD, CBS Health, the forgotten dividend stock. And why did I choose the topic? Why did I bring this topic? topic? I was on Seeking Alpha. You know, I'm a, a, a follower of Seeking Alpha as well. And I think, you know, I like to think to a lot of the contributors that have uh, been on the show past and present. But an article came across that was written by one of my uh, veteran buddies. You know, I love to always have some of my veteran buddies that are on doing great things after life, after the military. And he had an article up on Seeking Alpha called CVS, The Forgotten the Dividend Stock. So when I saw this, I immediately said, hmm. I read the article, and I was very intrigued by it, and I said, hey, I want you to come on. I want you to tell your side of the story of why do you think CVS Health is the forgotten dividend stock. But without further ado, let me bring in my very, very special guest today, calling all the way live. Well, he's not calling. He's here live today with us, all the way from South Carolina, contributed to Seeking Alpha, Mr. Stephen Lang. How are you doing today, sir? Good, Prince. I appreciate you having me on. Oh, yeah, definitely. For people out there, let's, before we jump into the topic, can you tell people a little bit about yourself? Yes. Yeah, so I was in the military for four years. After I graduated high school, mm -hmm. I joined. Um, I did a deployment in the Western Pacific for six months. Um, I got a lot of cultural mm -hmm. experiences um, by sailing around Asia and living in Hawaii. After my four years, mm -hmm. uh, where I actually met you, and you were my uh, boss in the Navy, and then after that, I, uh, <laughs> I attended the College of Charleston down here in uh, South Carolina. I wanted to come here because of their uh, investment program, um, and I got accepted to it as a sophomore. Um, I'm with 21 incredible and intelligent students at the college, and we manage a portfolio of $150,000 in real money. Um, the program's mm -hmm. led by Dr. Piles, who's the best teacher I've ever had. He's incredible. Um, it's taught me a lot about uh, finance. And now I am yeah, I'm selling the investment program. I wrote a Seeking Alpha article last month about CVS. Uh, it's called CVS, the Forgotten Dividend Growth Stock. And I think we're going to be mm -hmm. speaking about that a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. So uh, definitely, first question I want to ask you, why do you think CVS is the Forgotten Dividend Growth Stock? Yes, so CVS, um, the prior 10 years to 2018, they had a compounded annual growth rate for their dividend of 25% on average. Um, and they actually acquired Aetna recently. When they announced it in late, in late 2017, um, they announced a froze, they froze their dividend um, at $2 per share on an annualized basis. Um, and this is the reason why it's forgotten, because they, they stopped their growth. But I believe this was a smart move on their part, um, because they're, they're taking a lot of um, debt with it. So they'll be at 4.6 um, leverage. And then they plan on zooming their dividend growth um, when they're in the low threes as far as leverage. And I think with the um, synergies that CVS, Aetna, and their PBM um, called Caremark have will... Um, yeah, it'll make them a dividend growth beast, beast I believe, uh, after they get their leverage down. 
Now, you said their leverage is at 4.6, am I correct? Correct. Now, when you say their leverage is at 4.6, can you explain that to the listeners? What is leverage? You know, their leverage is at 4.6. Okay, well, what does that mean? Yes, so the way they calculate this is they're doing debt divided by EBITDA, so earnings before interest, tax, taxes, deductions, and amortization. Um, so usually if you have a higher um, leverage ratio, it's not as good. Um, so they're at 4.6 around right now. Um, then once they lower that in the low threes, they plan on um, increasing their dividends again. Um, it's it's a response, responsible by uh, management to do that because um, you don't want to keep increasing your dividend payments when you have a lot of debt, which they took on with their $77 billion acquisition of Aetna. So essentially you're saying instead of paying the investors dividends, they want to retain some of that money inside of the company and to pay off some of the debt that they owe for acquiring Aetna. Correct. Yes, uh, they have to pay off some of their debts, lower their debt, um, and lower their leverage. Now, okay, so what makes you give you this impression that it was forgotten? What makes you think it was forgotten? Um, so they, CVS used to be sort of a darling of dividend growth investors. Um, actually, in 2009, the year-over-year year over year dividend growth, growth was around 19%, um, and then 2010 it was 11%. And as a lot of people know, that was during the recession, and they could still manage double-digit uh, dividend growth during those years. And like I said, the last 10 years is 25% on average year-over-year year compounded annual growth rate. Um, and yeah, once they halted that, a lot of people, a lot of CVS shareholders were weren't too happy. Um, but I see it as the responsible thing to do. And once they get their leverage down, um, I believe that they're going to continue their growth. Now, have you been monitoring their leverage? Have you been monitoring their debt? Have they been paying out their debt? You know, are they on track to pay off this debt? And, and what do you think they're going to get out of this rut to where they can get back to paying dividends? Yeah, so I believe right now um, we're around in the mid-fours, and I was looking at their one of their reports, and management was guiding for two years um, out, so the back hit, the end of 2020, they should be um, in that low three range based on what I, off of what I saw. Um, they'll come out with earnings um, in February, so I'll get more uh, color there as far as their current um, leverage ratio. Now, well, to the person that's listening and saying, yes, it was forgotten, and, you know, a big article came out that said, CVS Health freezes its dividends, right? That's automatically mm-hmm. going to scare investors uh, because by monitoring dividends, it's a way to indicate a company's health, a company that can slowly pay dividends and increase dividends over time. It's a good indicator that, hey, if a company can manage to pay dividends, like you stated earlier, especially in a recession, that speaks volumes of their uh, financial stability. What's the person that's listening that says, well, why won't I just wait until 2020, then then I'll just buy CVS? Yes, uh, again, while I'm long CVS, um, it's in my portfolio. Um, I think it's an opportunity with the acquisition that drove the stock price down. Um, the debt's an issue. A lot of people look at that and uh, have some fears there. A lot of a lot of people may have gotten out because they stopped throwing their dividend. And then also the Amazon effect actually had um, a negative impact on the share price. Um, so Amazon announced uh, that they were looking to get into the pharmaceutical business, um, and they've acquired PillPack recently. Um, so that they gave 49 states authorization to provide prescription drugs. Uh, but I was actually reading an article uh, about a year ago, and they tried to get into shipping uh, certain creams and ointments that were prescriptions, and they had trouble logistically shipping them to where they couldn't keep the proper temperatures. Um, so it just kind of shows that between that and the regulations around health care, um, the CVS has mm-hmm. now Pat, um, I see it as it's kind of hard because Amazon's trying to get into into everything, and they're actually succeeding. But I think the healthcare industry—it's harder to really crack in 
Um, no, CVS has about 10,000 stores, and I believe those are touch points mm-hmm. um, to where the Aetna, the Aetna acquisition, I believe, is going to bring in uh, more customers. Um, it's going to increase foot traffic, and that's where I see that's where I see the growth and synergies. Okay. Now, when you say uh, dividends, someone who has a long-term portfolio, 10, 20, 30 years, um, why are you, you know, you're a young man, why are you investing into dividend-paying stocks? Why not yeah, get so when little, I look at uh, you know, like an Amazon, it doesn't pay, or Berkshire Hathaway, or companies, you know, a new technology company, something like a Facebook, or you know, a technology company that doesn't pay dividends. Why would you rather this big, large cap company that's paying dividends over a company that can um, that has expo- um, that has a long way to grow, like a Tesla? Yeah. So, well, for my age group, um, I actually have a little. I have some exposure to different stocks I'm on Facebook, um, things like that. That they don't pay a dividend, but what I look for in the lion's share of my companies that I buy um, as a shareholder. I look for consistent dividend growth. I know CVS halted it, um, but I think I'm taking more risk to where the rewards could be down down the line there. But for the lion's share of my portfolio, I'm buying companies that increase their dividend over time. And the biggest multi- or the biggest ratio that I look at is called yield on cost. So, for example, say you buy a stock at $100 today, and it's paying out a $2 dividend per share annually. So your current yield will be 2%. Now, say that they're uh, raising their dividend year after year, and say maybe 10 years down the line, um, they're paying $4 a share. Your yield on cost, based off your initial tranche, would be 4%. And say maybe another 10 years down the line, they raise it to $8 per share, right? Because they're growing their dividend over time you would take um, the current dividend payout and divide it into your initial purchase price of $100, and that will bring your yield on cost um, to 8%. And if you look at Warren Buffett, a lot of the companies he bought, um, such as Coca-Cola, I think he was yielding on cost about 70-something percent. Um, And it just shows that the uh, companies raising their dividends, um, it's a a strength, and uh, that's Yield on cost is the reason why I look at those companies. And then also, if you look at a lot of companies that don't pay a dividend, um, then you run the risk of management, such as Snapchat, who spent, I don't know how many million dollars on a New Year's Eve party, um, things like that, where I like companies that pay out money to their shareholders, they're shareholder friendly, um, so that money doesn't get squandered. Now, the funny part that you you bring up Warren Buffett, you know, Warren Buffett's CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, but Berkshire Hathaway, it doesn't pay dividends. What do you think about that? Correct. Um, that's kind of the reason why I don't buy Berkshire. It's a great company. Um, I have to look more into why they don't buy it. I think there's a, a um, interview that he has where, it's, where he explains it, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure why exactly they don't. You know, he, he kind of says that, you know, you would get your value out of the company rising over time in value. So, now, great point that you brought up. You brought up the yield um, yield over cost, right? And you brought yes. up uh, companies that slowly pay dividends over time. How can I find a company that pays dividends and that has increased over time? Yeah, great place to start. You can look up. Dividend aristocrats, dividend kings, or dividend achievers. So dividend achievers are 10 or more years dividend growth. Dividend aristocrats are 25 or more years of dividend growth. And then dividend kings, 50 or 50 plus years. And some kings are Johnson & Johnson. I'm long Johnson & Johnson. And um, I believe General Mills is a king. And big old companies like that who have done well over time, such as Johnson & Johnson, and they're still raising their dividends on average around 7 to 8% a year in 2019 mm. now. Okay. So that's great that you brought up the part about the uh, dividends. 
But what do you have to say to the fact that CVS, the stock itself, on the one-year chart, the three-year chart, the five-year chart, and the 10-year chart, it has underperformed the S&P 500. What do you have to say about that? Yes, to correct. To the index exactly. investors. Yes, so the index has 100% beaten CVS. Um, they've been under pressure for various reasons. Um, well, as of late, the Aetna, before that, Amazon, um, other reasons. But, yes, I'm a big – I believe in index funds as well. Um, if you invest in the S&P index fund or um, SPY, I believe it is, you're still getting around 2% yield. Um and mm-hmm. you can't really. If you don't know how to pitch in individual stocks, for example, I own um, the Fidelity Index Fund, which is a total market. I'm long on that. Um, I like to have, because it, it provides you immediate diversification. So you're buying um, a bunch of companies, the S&P 500, you're buying the top 500 market cap companies in the United States. Um, so if you're bullish on the United States, um, it would make sense to buy an S&P 500 index fund. You can't go wrong with index funds, I believe. Okay. Now, because someone who's looking at it and saying, hey, you know, I have an index and, you know, I just purchased the S&P 500 index, a low-cost index out there. Uh, but that is the only company that I've seen that went actually went to zero on fees. Yes. But, uh, you know, uh, Charles Schwab has one at point zero two that I've currently purchased. And I'm currently buying that. You jump on here and say CVS is the forgotten dividend stock, but it's underperformed. Its dividend is slightly higher than the index. Should I? Why should I add that to my portfolio? Um, well, first, first off, I would say, um, yeah, you have to look at your specific situation. Um, these are all my opinions. I'm, I'm not really like yeah. a, a licensed advisor or anything, all of that, but. Yeah, so the risk reward, you got to look at your risk reward. Um, with CVS, you're going to take on with that debt. Um, that's added risk there. Um, but you have to measure risk reward, um, CVS. Yeah, I, I want to know. Because yeah. I just want to know, you know, not to cut you off, but I just want to know your personal opinion. That's exactly, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want a recommendation to say, hey, you're saying this or do oh, this okay. or do that. But just your personal, just your personal oh, opinion. Yeah. If you have the total market, you have the S and P 500 index that you're currently invested in. You're earning two percent off of it, great, and you're outperforming CVS. Why should I stop that to jump into CVS? Because the S and P 500 is the benchmark. If you're not beating the benchmark, why should I be attracted to CVS? That's going to be a great dividend stock potentially if Aetna turns out to be great and things like. Why should I absorb that type of risk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I look at CVS, and I really like the company. When I look at stocks, I look to buy the, the company, uh, Warren Buffett, um, the investing, uh, you know, so the investing guy pretty much says only invest in a stock if you would buy the entire company. Um, I'm familiar with the product. I actually started buying it, the stock, back in 2016. I like the health care. Um, there's an increasing of the aging population group. I like those uh, tailwinds there. I like that you need to go, if you're sick, you go to the physical pharmacy. So if you need medicine now, you can't really order on Amazon and it come right away. You go out and get it. Um, I like that factor. I like that CVS has the 10,000 stores. Um, And right now I've been buying recently because of the um, increased share price. Uh, They're only trading at about a nine price to earnings multiple. And, um, yeah, with the fears of uh, the Aetna and everything, um, it could be – it's for the long-term money investor, I think it could be a great play. Um, and that's – the synergies, like I said, with the Aetna uh, and the different touch points is what, where I believe the CVS is a good investment there. Okay. Now I want to speak on competition. It's rival Walmart. I always see Walmart and CVS right next to each other. Why not Walgreens? Not Walmart, but I'm thinking Walgreens. I always see Walgreens and CVS right there next to each other. Walgreens just got picked up out of Dow Jones, if I'm uh, not mistaken. You know, why not Walgreens? 
Yeah, so actually Walgreens is, I believe, a dividend king. So I, I like Walgreens a lot as mm-hmm. well. It's just the um, the business plan in the future. It's never been done before with the insurance, PBM, and retail pharmacy. Um, Walgreens hasn't done it yet, so CVS will be leading that charge. And I really think if you look at different aspects of the business, such as mini clinics, um, there's 10,000 stores are only in about 1,000. Um, but you can go in, and I know people in my family and friends that I know to start using mini clinics. So they're going in when they're sick or to get a shot, and they're, walk, they're walking or driving to CVS and then get their shots. If they have like a, a cold or something minor, they can go there, be seen by a nurse practitioner, and get their prescriptions all right there. And I, I kind of see those things in the market. And based on what I saw, Larry Merlot, the CEO, and as you might say, is they're making, they want, they envision CVS to be the healthcare hub. Um, and they can see another reason why I'm bullish is they can grow um, their earnings based off the fact that, or not the fact, they can see lower costs due to when Aetna, they provide the foot traffic, and they can lower the cost by, they want, to, they want to be a service to where they can get people um, following their healthcare uh, reg- regime, uh, their regime, and um, this will lower cost because the insurance won't have to pay as much, and it'll keep people healthier, which I'm a big believer in. Um, I like to invest in companies that um, make the world a better place and everything, and you see a healthcare hub uh, is the reason why I like CVS more than Walgreens there. Okay. That's a, you know, so you pretty much you're saying, hey, I think the, the uh, which word am I looking for here? The growth potential of CVS is higher than Walgreens. Am I correct on that? Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay, so you know, that's correct. So why you want to, why would you want to go to uh C V C V S over over Walgreens? So now going forward, right, when you look at Walgreens, which is a dividend king, right? Give that high archery you just gave before about the dividends, the levels of the dividends. Yes. Oh, what was that? You gave that level like you had the king. Yeah, you had the king. Oh, okay. so What's the king, highest? 50. Yeah. yeah, king, aristocrat, and achiever. So the yeah, achiever is 10, aristocrat 25, king is 50. Mm-hmm. Now, Walgreens is a king, correct? Correct. What about CVS? CVS is not. Um, they were on the verge of becoming, I believe, an aristocrat until they halted their uh, increase, increasing their dividends when they announced the acquisition a year ago. And so, if your philosophy yeah, usually, I would not is to, you know, not to cut you off there, I know it's a, a little delay, but your philosophy, yeah, you said you want to get the dividend kings, correct? Correct. So if you want to, why not go with Walgreens, who's a dividend king, who is not, their growth potential is not that far off, and who, you know, who's pretty much in the same space? Yes, you're right. For the majority of my portfolio, that would be the case. Um, But for, Mm -hmm. I think the point I'm trying to make is for people who have a longer Mm -hmm. time, investment time horizon and are willing to take on more risk, and um, I think CVS would be a good option for the cons- more conservative investor that's looking for steady eddy companies. And Walgreens may be the better option. Just kind of uh, where you are on your time horizon, your risk reward, um, your sensitivity to risk. Um, but yeah, I, I usually lean more towards the conservative side. But the, the unique business model I see is, is the reason why I'm bullish on the company. Okay. Now, before we get out of here, is there anything else? What do you want to leave the fans, uh, uh, the people that's checking out this e- uh, episode around the globe, out in Hawaii, the people that's going to catch the playback on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff like that, and the people that's going to catch us back on the podcast? What do you want to say? What do you want to leave with them with? 
Oh, sure. First of all, I'd like to say I really appreciate you having me on the show. It means the world to me. I just want to say thank you there. And you've been a great mentor to me um, throughout my military mm-hmm. career. I remember you saying setting a, uh, set yourself up for life after the military because one day we'll have to take this uniform off. And that really hit home, home to me. And then you look more towards investing and various other things to get prepared. Um, so I thank you for that. Um, and then I'm a writer on Seeking Alpha. If you want to check out my article, feel free. Um, it's Stephen Lang, S-T-E-V-E-N-L-A-N-G-E. And uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Steve Lang123. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, you know, definitely it was a pleasure. I'm very proud of you uh, for, you know, you know, seeing you as that uh, young kid from serving to going off and getting into the uh, financial industry and going to school and studying and seeing you pop up on Seeking Alpha. Great article, by the way. And for everybody out there, I should have said this in the beginning, but the article will be in the description box for you to check out yourself, uh, to uh, check out the article, the CVS, the Forgotten Dividend Stock. I thought it was great analysis, how you broke it down. And I thought you explained yourself very well of why you believe in CVS and comparing to what else is out there. So uh, hats off to you. Very proud of you uh, for for what you're doing. You know, continue to progress in life and bettering yourself. And uh, definitely, uh, and I definitely look to see uh, more about what Stephen Lang is bringing to the world. Yeah, thank you. All have, right. Have a good night. So, have a good night. All right. So to all of the the fans out there and to the next video podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else crazy you see me do around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.